the whole appealing for peace or really praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the Caribbean drag. Yeah, that's a good question. Place. So what do you what do you have to say about that guy? Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to the latest edition of Views on the News, the show where I have a panel of opinionated people. And today's panel includes Tercia Duplessis from South Africa. Hello, Tercia, how are you? And very much welcome. Thank you. It's <laughs> glad, I'm glad to be here again. And it also includes David Orenstein from New York. Hello. David, how the devil are you? I am. The devil is doing well in New York City. <laughs> Can, you know, uh, John, you didn't ask me how I am, but it's show far, show good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that, might, that might only have relevance to people who were in the previous conversation, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, item number one. In Riyadh, which of course is the capital of Saudi Arabia, there's a TV host, a woman who doesn't wear a veil. And she was interviewing Mohammed bin Salman, who is a big wig in Saudi Arabia, if you if you know. And he is recorded saying, we won't spend 30, 30 years of our lives fighting radicalism we will destroy them today can you imagine but, but i'm i'm not sure what is meant by that john i i, I watched the the um interview in the news bulletin mm. and d does he mean to say that the radicals need to be fought and that it won't take 30 years because that's what i take it to mean it's good news, isn't it? I mean, if the leadership of the country... In, in principle, mm. I, I mean, I think it's a brilliant idea to... to mm. get, are they going to mellow them? Um, how yeah, they, yeah, yeah. I'd love to know how that's going to happen. What are you saying is we're, we're, not, we're against fundamentalism, but we're okay with moderates. Did you see the applause that he got? I did. So it's fantastic piece of news that the leadership of that country, I mean, and this is a country that has previously permitted women to drive. What a breakthrough that was, right. you know? So this is another step in the right direction, isn't it? What do you think, David? Well, I, I think the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> mm. um, and that, uh, that uh, I, and I have no qualms with anyone being uh, of, of any particular faith. Um, but clearly, uh, the threat to uh, humanity is this radicalism, is this evangelicalism, whether it be Islam or whether it be Christianity. And if more reasonable religious people um, uh, work with people who are secularists, then yeah. they are my friend. And I'm happy to build that bridge and yeah. happy to put into check anybody who would threaten um, threaten my life or my family's life or my nation's life or your nation's life uh, and take away human rights. It's, it's good to hear it coming from a Muslim country, though, isn't it? Yes, yes, mm. yes, yes. That's quite radical, in fact. <laughs> yes, yeah. reverse radical. Yes, yes, indeed. So if we go to central Venezuela, Ven Venezuela, I gave it an extra syllable there for free. If we go to central Venezuela, it doesn't actually figure in the global atheist news very often. But they've got illegal gold mines going on there. And the they're not very health and safety conscious. So a wall of earth collapsed and killed, very sadly, 23 people. Mm. And uh, the, the remarkable thing about it from our point of view is I listened to the BBC World Service radio throughout the night. And I heard a man on there saying that this is a survivor, 
one not one of the 23 dead but a survivor yeah. and he came on the bbc world service radio saying i thank god for the miracle of my survival <laughs> what does that say about the 23 dead what? it just it, it just tells yeah. us that we are all very much Imagine. focused on our own well-being which yeah. is not per se wrong because that is after all what keeps us alive because if we were not focused on our own well-being we would probably um, not have survived and I, I i just wish that we could acknowledge that fact that we are mostly concerned with our own well-being and that while that may seem selfish if one begins to think about it being selfish is actually the best way to be and i'll explain why i say this because if i'm thinking of myself and my own well-being then i will hopefully come to the realization that my well-being depends on the well-being of those around me and then i will paradoxically be less inclined to think only of myself because i will realize that my well-being depends on yeah. how, mm. how other people yes you're not you're not special that's what you're saying you're not that, special that's, yes that's, yeah that's exactly it the thing the thing about this that puzzles me is how can he thank his god for yeah. his survival without simultaneously thanking his god for the death that he caused in the same incident right. of the 23 other people right well it's like uh, when uh, two teams pray before a sporting event uh, for god's uh, grace in uh, letting them win obviously both teams can't win so what does that mean the you know the god loved the pittsburgh steelers more than they like the new york jets i mean it's it's all ego uh <laughs> Yeah, um, it, it, it it's you know when people say that they have a, a personal relationship with Jesus, what they mean is they have a personal relationship with um their own psyche. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. On, on, on that topic, that is the one thing about Christianity that I'm most critical of, because there is that that innate egocentrism that. Mm. I, I mean, I was there, so so it took my four-year-old daughter to open my eyes to mm -hmm. that egocentrism, and that that's why I'm 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 not I'm careful of of condemning. I don't condemn Christians for being like that. I just really do hope that their mm. eyes open to that duplicity. That mm. at the same time that you're thanking your God for saving your life in the same incident that 23 other people who were probably just as religious as you are right. died. Mm. And th that is the one major criticism that I have against Christianity. And I, I told you guys before the show that I was at this event um, in my town today. It was a, a prayer event. I was just curious to see what was happening there. Mm. And I found it deeply ironic that um, when they started the praise and worship part of the sermon, I got bored and I left. But this was hosted um, in an open air, uh, in a park in, uh, in the center of town. And in that park, many homeless people actually sleep. So the, the, the heaps of bedding are in the park. And as I walked back home, there were two chaps lying under a tree with their bedding that they live there they live in the park they're homeless yes. and yeah. and on the loudspeakers was the song praising god's mercy and praising god's goodness and i was just thinking to myself how can you simultaneously praise mm. god for his mercy and his love and his goodness while there are people living outside in the mm. park and yeah. you don't see you don't how do you not see that Yes. How? Mm. What, 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 is, what is not switched on in your brain? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, yes. It's, it's this ability to compartmentalize, right? To be able yes. to stay so focused on the message of the faith mm. while denying the fact that, you know, human reality exists way beyond um, the reason of anyone's book. 
religious yeah. holy text. Yeah, 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 yeah. So on the subject of things about Christianity that you don't like, <laughs> <laughs> take take a look at this. Australian bishop Christopher Saunders has been charged with rape and a string of historical sex offences, some against children. Mm. This is in Western Australia, which is mostly desert apart from the coast. And there's some little towns. There's one called Broome. Uh, there's one called Kununura. And there's an Aboriginal community of Kalamburu. And that's where he was perpetrating his unlawful and indecent assault and dealing with indecently with children when he was a person in authority between 2008 and 2014. Mm. So he's on bail at the moment and he's ordered to reside at his home until the hearing in June. And he says he's going to deny these charges. And uh, the Catholic Bishops Conference in Australia promised to cooperate with the police, saying that these charges were very serious and deeply distressing. And it's only right and proper, indeed necessary, that they be thoroughly investigated. Mm. So what do you think about that? Yeah. Well, you know, it's six years of terrorism and probably not uh, only the six years that he's been caught. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it's the sexual predation, uh, this uh, malfeasance and malfunction of of, of this belief that, you know, priests can't marry, which is something that yeah. is, is relatively new in the church because priests did marry before this edict came down. Yeah. Um, and the, you know, the age old question, this chicken of the egg question is that do predators go into the church or are they made by the church? Yeah. And, 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 and the reality is it doesn't make a difference. What is the right answer? Mm. But the church has not dealt with, the fact that this is ongoing and it's a centuries old problem Yeah. Um, for every one of these guys who are caught, there's probably 10 who escape justice. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm wondering, do we have any data? Is it a mostly Catholic problem because of they've got this um, celibacy rule right. or because we know it happens in other churches too, but yeah. what's the proportion? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, um, I, but, you know, there's things like the Boy Scouts of America here in the United States where you have people who are doing this as well. So there are predators in a lot of these different organizations, but nowhere is are predators protected, Yeah, you know, moved from parish to parish yeah. when mm. caught. You know, the only reason why the organized church is in any way trying to um, support um, law enforcement now is because you know it's a public relations thing. It's not yeah, about morality yeah. because they didn't yeah. care about morality before they got caught. No, no, it's just the image that they're projecting. Yeah, yeah. Mm. shameful. Yeah. So while we're talking to an American, <laughs> uh -oh. I'm, I'm going I'm to take the the news to Alabama. Oh God, where <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's an extremely interesting part of america should mm -hmm. we put it like that yes so the supreme court of alabama has ruled that frozen embryos are children mm -hmm. and therefore if you harm them it could be an offense and what happened apparently was um, some a patient wandered into the place in the uh, ho hospital where the embryos were stored and this patient handled them and accidentally dropped them and they were destroyed. So now, since they are deemed to be children by the Supreme Court, is he guilty of, I don't know, manslaughter? Multiple. Yes. Well, it's Serial killer. 
<laughs> I, I have to say this story and, and now listening to it for the second time that the one thing that perplexes me more than than the embryos being um, declared children um, I, I kind of expected that from Alabama but the one thing that perplexes me more is how how, how did the patient wander into the place with <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that, that does uh, that does seriously concern me a little bit um, more than than the actual embryos that were um, that were harmed in 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 the, pro <laughs> the process. But I, I I can say, David, don't feel bad because um, I did a little analysis of a letter to the one of the Afrikaans newspapers where um, suicide was compared to murder and abortion and it was said that if you commit suicide it's so this person holds the view that it's against because murder is against the law suicide is against the law and therefore anybody who commits suicide will be um will be punished by and, and the implication is punished not 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 by god but, but you know will mm -hmm. So I suppose I suppose if if embryos are are children, then suicide is illegal. And I, I mean, these things, you know, <laughs> it is it, just a mess. It's, isn't it? it's a mess because I I saw this very funny meme. I mean, I, I don't know if in the UK and in, 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 in South Africa you have these high occupancy lanes where if you're driving on the highway. You know, if you have more than three passengers, you have a special lane, you can go faster. Yeah, that's an American thing. Oh, okay. Well, someone had a, a, a picture of a dozen eggs in their passenger seat. <laughs> and they said, look, in Alabama, I can now use the high occupancy lane. Yes. Um, you know, I, I, I wrote on Facebook that, you know, this, this court decision is like saying that um, beer battered shrimp is alcohol. Um, yes. it's it's really ridiculous and and it is a religious decision because one of the justices went on to talk about god and he's an evangelical um, person and so this is a sub subversion of a uh, law yeah yeah um and Terrible. it's creating a lot of problems in alabama for oh. the republican party it is the Republican Party in the United States that got rid of Roe v. Wade. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and this is the slide into destroying reproductive rights for women. Yes. Um, yes. And, and it's a form of violence against women. This is nearing the border of yeah. uh, a handmaid's tale. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. How any, for me, how any woman, unless of course she wants to, vote for these people. Who are yeah. going to take away their rights mm. uh, is just shocking to me because uh, forget about reproductive freedom. Um, there's no scientist who will say, of course, that any, uh, first of all, in a fertilized egg, uh, it barely has enough cells to divide the first like day or two or even the yeah. weeks. So, mm. it, and, and, you know, personhood, you know, uh, itself is only a religious concept. Yes, the idea that once an egg and a sperm meet, that you've created a um, a human, mm. not just a a, a chronoblast, you know, a blast, uh, mm. is a purely theological view, yeah, yeah. and it violates the separation of church and state, mm. and it's just it's just horrible. It's just horrible. It's, it's, the ripples are spreading, aren't they? Because of the Roe v. Wade. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you're if you're in the red states in the United States, um, um, you might as well be living under um, a theocracy in many cases, yeah, yeah, not yeah, all yeah. cases. And I don't want to, you know, drag there. I, I know a lot of very good people who are living in, quote unquote, red states uh, or or purple states um, yeah. who are as frustrated as I am, you mm -hmm. know, living in New York uh, and yeah. seeing this. Um, but I think what it does is it creates enough backlash where you see that in the United States, since we're talking about um, elections coming in 2024, that you're going to see a, a, a quote unquote blue wave um, so. yeah. in, in, in at least the Senate and hopefully the presidency. Mm. 
So yeah. we'll see. Yep. So a, a lot of this is caused by the abuse of language, isn't it? Because these pro-lifers have moved the boundary from mm -hmm. backwards from what used to be known as a baby. Now, a baby mm -hmm. was some a new individual that you got after they were born. Mm -hmm. And what, before they were born, they had a different name. They were a fetus, or mm -hmm. earlier than that, they were an, an embryo. And before that, mm -hmm. they were a zygote. And before mm -hmm. that, they were separated sperms and eggs. So what they're doing is they're shifting the boundary back. And it's not just children. It's not just babies that have gone into the womb. But it's now children. that We didn't used to refer to babies as children until they'd started to walk about, you know. So... Mm -hmm. They're abusing language. And isn't Catholic Church, isn't it illegal to, uh, not illegal, they say don't masturbate, right? Because you're killing children. I was going to go there. Hello, mm. Diogo. Yeah. I was Hi. going to go there. But the next step will be, logically, we're talking about masturbation and eggs. Um, but the, <laughs> the next logical thing What did you have for breakfast? Will... <laughs> <laughs> the, the next logical step will be for somebody to de to declare masturbation murder because yeah. I mean, mm. after all the which is very biblical by the way um, right mm. yeah mm. you know well, of course um, often well, women uh during menstruation will also lose sex so it's the same deal yeah yeah right, exactly and so, is even so i was going to go on to the next development so we've we've moved We've moved baby back into the womb. We've now moved child back into the womb. So the next development is obviously that sperms and eggs are begin going to be known as half children. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that movie, uh, Men and an Elf. Uh, two men and an elf. Uh, now it's two men, an elf, and a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> but th this is this has got serious implications in Alabama because. All those medicos who have been administering IVF, right? They're scared to do it now mm -hmm. because it's shut course. down. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and all the poor women or men who you know have have got um, reproductive difficulties, they can't get a service in Alabama. Mm -hmm. just, just ridiculous. Yeah. So, so you know, welcome to. <laughs> sorry, sorry for interrupting. I'm I'm like yeah. that, but um, uh, yeah, you know, you know, like when, uh, um, like if a, if a woman miscarriages, for example, yeah. Uh, yeah, or she was tested pregnant, but then something happened, and yeah. next day she wasn't. Yeah, uh, what uh, what's the consequence here? Will someone call the police? Not really. Yeah, yeah. It's not practical. Oh, so not the, if God does it. If, if, it's, if, if God does it, then it's all right. You know. It's yeah, we you know. Yeah. You know, it, it's always the fault of the woman. So whatever. Uh, <laughs> that is actually happening. We've got a, an ancient law in the UK, yeah. which um, it is some sort of abuse of human rights, goes back 150 or 200 years, and a, a few women have been prosecuted for miscarrying because yeah. according to this old law that's that's murder so yes, uh, mm -hmm. as i was saying it, it's worse than that because now there are men who had sex with a woman and now the woman lost uh, miscarriages or something they can uh persecute the woman yes, yes. yeah it is it's violence against women it, it, it's, it, 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 it's complete it's a completely normal thing which women don't have control over but they can go to jail for yeah yeah ridiculous mm -hmm. yeah thank you theists you've messed up again <laughs> <laughs> i mm -hmm. bit my tongue there i was going to say another word <laughs> <laughs> i want to tell something before the show so I did this interesting post on, on Facebook. I, I usually only post when I think I have something novel to, to, to tell. And uh, like I, I, I ask people, uh, like, uh, regardless if you are an atheist or not, how would you be able to tell if um, you were lied to? 
and then I finished saying, I think the, this might be a hard question to answer. So if you, uh, so I think if you are able to answer it, you are probably the most humble side, and therefore the correct side. So it's a bit of a bait there. And interesting enough, I only have one phase to reply and about 60 other, uh, 50 or so other uh, replies. So I think it's an interesting result. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the question? What, what I, I asked them, um, like, how do you know uh, for the for when you're being, being lied? You see, for the belief you have, how do you know you have whether you've been lied to? Yeah, and very good. I I think um, it's in the backside of people's minds that maybe they aren't so sure about their beliefs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Well, so many of them think with their backside, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. it's, a, it's, it's a chauffeur. Yes. <laughs> moving, on. <laughs> moving on, we've got um, in Rome, we've got a strange thing happening because um, there's a woman who has accused a once exalted Jesuit artist yeah. of spiritual, psychological, and sexual abuse historically. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason that it's come up now is because of the people above him in the hierarchy of the Catholic Church who covered up for the last 30 years. You were saying this earlier, David, how they are protected. Yeah. So this woman is Gloria Branciani, and uh, she is telling her story in public for the first time, and she alleges abuse by Reverend Marco Rupnik, including his fondness for three-way sex in the image of the Trinity. <laughs> well, I, I, you, you know, if, if this woman is a Christian, then she really shouldn't have any problem with that. And I'm saying that very respectfully because um, there's a very popular idea that uh, in any sexual relationship, God is present in any case. You know, it's the, the people having sex. And and there's actually a thing in, in, in especially fundamentalist um, circles that... Yes. The, the union, the union between a man and his, between husband and wife, should God should be present in that union, and and it's a, so, so this that idea is is very uh, normal in, in, yeah, yeah. in certain uh, circles. Uh, uh, that, but I I do go that, ahead. That's on. that's why you call out, oh God, when you're uh, when you're finishing. But, yeah. but the, the part of the story that, that troubles me is the, the, the use of the word spiritual. So I suppose that's a bit of a trigger for me because I hate that word. I understand psychological abuse. I understand sexual mm. abuse. But mm. it sort of discredits the claim for me when you, yeah. when, yeah. when you claim mm. spiritual abuse. So, mm. so I, while I am 100% um, against any form of abuse, well, we, we should acknowledge that, um, well, I, I think in, in, in view of fairness, women can also abuse their um, status as often being abused to ruin somebody's life. Yeah. And, and that's also not, not moral. Um, and and it, it's, it's, to me, it's like a double sin, if you want to call it like that, because anybody who does that and that has happened yeah, yeah. So, mm. so then you discredit any other um you, you you also make it more difficult for people who really are abused yes yes so, so it, it's and the fact that she claims to be spiritually abused mm. i don't know yeah it's, well, I'm, it's, I'm interested in this three-way sex <laughs> in the image of the trinity thing because uh, yeah. you know, you know, um, there, there was, there's a name for three-way sex, isn't there? But threesome, a threesome, yes, yes. yes. In this case, <laughs> you in know, this, 
it, presumably I, one of them was a ghost. Yeah. I've, I've heard pl plenty of stories like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, frankly, if, if the if, if the Catholic Church can, you know, um, uh, afford me a three way once in a while, I might become a Catholic. So, <laughs> have you heard about the uh, uh, realism? Oh, realism! It's like the, a new UFO cult, and they believe in like sex in a spiritual sense. Hey. It, I, that, that sounds like a, a good marketing strategy. Yeah. I, look, bonobo chimpanzees have it all figured out. I mean, yes, it, 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 <laughs> it, it, <laughs> that's the way to be uh, because bonobos have the most peaceful, peaceful society. Mm. They're constantly having sex with one another. And, mm. there's, you know, it all works out in the end. Yeah. Um, they, are, they are just more civilized, I guess. It's much more civilized. Yeah. Yeah. If the Catholics could just be more like bonobo chimpanzees. Yes, and, yes. And also, very importantly, in bonobo societies, um, the matriarch runs the show. I will yes. say that. Yes, as, yes. The only, as the only woman on the panel tonight, and most of the time, <laughs> I shall... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I, I can remove you from the panel, you know. <laughs> you can try. It won't be as <laughs> Anyway, uh, on the subject of animals, and, you know, if we go from bonobos to lionesses, in a zoo in India, there's a lioness who's been named Sita. Okay. You know, it's, it's very little difference from calling a lion Leo, but mm. uh, they've named this one Sita, and unfortunately a Hindu group thinks that's blasphemy. It's an assault on the community's religious beliefs because Sita is, let me see if I can get this right, she's the consort of Lord Ram and herself a sacred deity. And such an act amounts to blasphemy and a direct assault on the religious belief of all Hindus. Don't name your cat Sita. Well, I, I, I want to say that my daughter is 23 and she has um, she is a, a devotee of the movie The Lion King. She has been since she saw it when she was about six. And she will agree with the Hindus that every, how dare you name a lioness anything but Nala. So as... <laughs> Speaking on behalf of all the Lion King devotees, I I support their case. No lioness should be named anything but Nala. And everybody knows a male lion should not be named anything but Simba. So there you have it. That's my view. <laughs> That, 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 of course, is the, is the African name for male lions. And if, since they exist in Africa, it's very reasonable to adopt that name. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. Recently, recently, I've seen a video from, uh, I'm not sure if it's a story, an history guy or an anthropologist, something in between. So um, he was saying, he was talking about taboo names, like oh. words we can spell. Mm. And uh, he, he said that probably the English word for bear was mm. an alternative word that ancient people used to not say the actual name of the animal because the animal bear used to be sacred to them. Bear has roots in the word for brown, the color of the animal. Yeah, that's very interesting, Diego. Um, and, and John oh, and David, as, a, as an anthropologist, mm -hmm. or, no, you're not an anthropologist, you're an... Pay, mm -hmm. you, yeah, yeah you? that's right, mm -hmm. yes. But so, so I'm, I'm reading this book, a very famous book, um, Circles in a Forest. It is available in English as well. It's, if you haven't read it, please do. But, mm -hmm. In, in the original Afrikaans, um, the it, the story is set in the Nizna forest in the 1880s, and the people who the woodcutters who lived and worked in the forest, they, so they were wild elephants um, in in the forest, and the, and the people were always on the lookout because these elephants would trample them, and there would be conflict between the humans and the animals. And they did not refer to the elephants as elephants; they referred to them as the big feet. Because mm. there was this belief that if you call them elephants, if 
if you if you said the name elephant or the word elephant then they would hear you and they would trample you um, oh, mm. so it's a very interesting um concept this this mm. idea of taboo names and mm. it's it's on the topic of names and, and taboo names in, in the african culture very much like in the south american culture there's not a problem with giving a, a child a name like jesus jesus mm -hmm. um, yeah, which is very in in my culture you would never do that i mean that would be blasphemous mm -hmm. yet in in south america um to yeah. name somebody jesus Almost is not a problem right? yeah. and and in, in the african culture um the black african culture it's very common to give names like blessing or so, so mm. um it, it would be the the zulu version or the Xhosa mm. version of that name yeah but mm. now now that many um black africans are christianized they do not hesitate to give their children names like praise yeah. god yeah, yeah. I, my, my yeah. mother mm -hmm. my mother had a, a several children in in her classes when she taught primary school who mm. were named praise god yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my mom, on this, on this so, very so, show, you have a John and a David from the Bible. Mm. Yes, but that's different. Can you imagine? To say David sits still is one thing, but can you imagine in a class with 38, uh, you, you're a devout Christian, and you have to say, praise God, will you sit still and keep still <laughs> yourself down? Can you imagine that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. my mom, it was problematic. Sure. It's also, while we're on this subject, it's also common in the in the African culture, particularly in the the uh, American African culture, to take British peerage names for your children. So you call yourself Lord or Baron or Duke, oh. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's been quite a few famous uh, Americans with those names. Yeah. Right. That's not oh, Duke Ellington. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the subject of naming, yeah, Mary. Okay, Mary. Now, unfortunately, according to um, some Christians, um, it's not a good thing to use the name Mary and and uh, the uh, uh, association with uh, Jesus's mother in anti-abortion activism because that's a slur on the purity of the Virgin Mary <laughs> in their minds. <laughs> this is a complicated contrivance going on. I know, yes, yes. But in Mexico, they have the, the Catholic area in Mexico. They have Our Lady of Guadalupe, who is a variation on the Virgin Mary, who's pregnant, <laughs> she's depicted on shopping bags and jewellery and everywhere else as a pregnant Virgin Mary. The, so the, the Catholics are really up in arms about that too. Well, uh, they, David, you can say. Oh, well, yeah, I was just going to say regarding your previous story and, and, and this story that we, we have to remember that blasphemy is a victimless crime. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That it only offends those people who are uh, religiously offended uh, yes. from different religions, uh, because it never offends any of us. No, you know, no, no. Mary, Mary's dead; she can't be offended. Right, and uh, I know plenty of Marys. You know, um, yeah. uh, but you know, as Diego was saying, as Tercy as you were saying, you know, language uh, changes all of the time. Cultural yeah. appropriation. In yeah. terms, you know, especially in a globalized world where, yeah. you know, yeah. um, we're not really foreigners anymore, quote unquote foreigners. Uh, yeah. You know, it doesn't take um, four months for information to cross the globe, yeah. across the globe. It is happening immediately. Yeah. So of course, you're going to have all of this. What I would say is cross pollination of, yeah. of different ideas and all these yeah. different things. Um, yeah. uh, and I think that's something that we should value. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's happening. It's happening in Rome right now, because uh, many of the Romans are disillusioned 
by their experience of Catholicism. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's got it's a bit of a tainted brand now, mm -hmm. isn't it? So mm -hmm. what are they doing? They're finding a connection to their roots through worshiping the gods of antiquity. So yeah. <laughs> they get together and and they celebrate Juno, Jupiter, mm -hmm. and Apollo. Mm -hmm. and round <laughs> and round we go. <laughs> yeah. and so this has upset the Pope. Pope Francis has said, <laughs> Rome is pagan, he said. He's told members of the Roman clergy that um, they ought to consider the city to be a mission territory. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, 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 what mesmerizes me is not going, not worshipping uh, the ancient gods as much as the idea that one wants to worship anybody yes, or yes, yes. right uh, th th that mesmerizes me more than than, yes. than who one worships why does why yes. do we have this thing about worship uh, just on, yeah. on the blasphemy uh, i do hope that nobody is uh, very strict on the names of egyptian gods because my brother they have about seven cats and they're all named after Egyptian gods and oh, so, good, good. So, good. Um, yes. Yeah, I hope one of them's named after the dog-headed god. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what they have. I think they have Osiris and they have Isis, and I don't know yeah. who else they've yeah. got. Um, but it would just be <laughs> would just be a nice a nice uh, effect if a cat was named after a dog god. <laughs> uh, it's possible, but mm -hmm. on this thing of blasphemy. It's interest it's always interesting how our minds work because I've been an atheist now for more than 10 years and it took me a long while to be desensitized and not have a very visceral response when somebody said oh god or yeah. jesus christ yeah. because it was so deeply ingrained into my psyche that yeah. Yeah. To say the name of God or to say Jesus Christ yeah. or to say it, it, yeah. it, it was so deeply ingrained to me that yeah, yeah. that primitive part of my brain would just immediately yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. kick in. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing that, that I would like us to, as a species to to ask one another to investigate mm. why do, do you have that response? Yeah, and yeah. To, mm. for, for 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 whoever thinks that there is such a thing as blasphemy yeah yeah you were ingrained as a child yes. into and into yes. these are taboo things you must never say those those sounds emanating through the air yes. oh they're really bad what nonsense but i want to rename your cat where is your cat she's not in the in the dresser uh, behind i'll you. show you the, <laughs> wait 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 the, uh where's she now where's she where's she, where's she? there she is oh Can yeah okay her? yeah, yeah. A new bit, a new bit. Awesome. Anubis, come on. Here, girl. Anubis. Anubis. <laughs> my, my, cat, my cat is named Pursa. Who, who's that? My cat. My cat. Yes, but who's she named after? Ah. Is it uh, It's a word for someone who gets mad easily. Ah, all right. <laughs> oh, I, I should have named this one. That my sounds name. like most cats to me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is named after Picasso. Let me show you why. You haven't met it. Come so. Come so. Come, Picasso. Come, it's a cat show tonight. It's Picasso. <laughs> Do you see why she's named Picasso? Uh, it's little Anubis. She's on her nose. Uh, what? What's she's she? a very naughty kitty. She's very naughty, very busy. There she <laughs> is. I, I'm going to finish the show with an item of good news. You, yeah. you will like this. Humanists UK is proud to announce the launch of the only UK-based dedicated helpline for apostates, mm. people who live high-control religions or cults. Apparently, they've had this um, service for a while. It's a long-standing faith-to-faithless support program, but they, they're upping it so that it will be available online and I think probably on the tele telephone as well uh, for three days a week now. And you will be able to phone in 
if you are faced by challenges as a result of being an ex-Muslim, ex-Jehovah's Witness, ex-Evangelical, and ex-Mormon. It doesn't wow. say doesn't say ex and Anglican. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's implied. Well, I, I think it, it might be because Anglicanism is already dead. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't result right. in so much religious trauma. Yes, it doesn't. That's right. Yes, it's just about tea and cakes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, you've been wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. I've, I've enjoyed this. I hope you have. Yeah. It's a wrap. Yeah, it's good so, to see everyone. Say bye bye. bye, -bye. Say bye bye. Russia was was the Pope appealing for peace, or was he praying for peace? And, and the same applies to the Caribbean dragon. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you, what do you have to say about that guy?